everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, you're going to learn how to use stretching to build muscle. Yeah, you can really do that. Also, you're going to learn how to improve your sleep and a lot of other great things. In the second half of the episode, we have four live callers who ask questions like, hey, can I build muscle working out only 20 minutes a day? And the answer is, well, wait and find out. And then also, hey, I'm trying to bulk, but I'm really active in my day-to-day -day life. We answer those questions and more. And if you have very little time and you want to get just short clips from these episodes, go to our Mind Pump Clips channel and subscribe. All right. Enjoy the show. Here's an interesting way to stimulate muscle growth, loaded passive stretching. No joke. Studies show that this actually builds more muscle. You just got to do it the right way and at the right time. What's the term for that? Uh, well, it's static stretching, but it's loaded. So uh, there's one study I read where uh, Norwegian scientists did this with athletes and saw tremendous growth in yeah. both fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. And then there was another study that did this on more advanced athletes and it saw an improvement of 6% more muscle growth by adding this. Now, now the, the, the is, key, go ahead. Yeah, is this attributed more to the fact that you're holding it in range and you have this like real um, isometric, strong type of contraction? Totally. That might be because what's interesting is you're not trying to, so let me let me paint the picture first so we can address All that, right? right? Yeah. So essentially- I 100% think it's that though, what he's saying. So do I. So essentially what, ha what you do is, it, first off the studies, they're doing the stretching very frequently. So this is done like five days a week, okay? So- this would be done with every workout. Number two, it's typically done after a workout or at the end of a set. So to give you an example, let's say I did calf raises on a leg press. So I have my legs out in front of me, I'm doing calf raises and I do a set until I can't do really too many more reps and I'm gonna stop the set. Then what I do is I stop by, I don't rack the weight, I let the weight drop so that my calves are in this deep stretch position and then I hold that for 60 seconds. Now. It's passive in the sense that I'm not trying to hold it, okay? So it's mm -hmm. not like a isometric contraction where I'm trying to hold a weight or balance it or stabilize it. However, I do think some of that's still happening, right? Because the CNS, the, the muscles how, have to support yeah, it in some way. It's not passive. You can't call that passive. That's what it's still referred to in the studies. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you can't call that passive. It's not because, accurate. Yeah, yeah, it's not because then you would be resting on a joint. You would, you're, you are literally. Stay, in order to keep that from the way oh, crushing allowed, you, yeah, crushing you, right, or ripping your ripping your Achilles off. Well, it's not you that, are you are actively contracting. Well, it's not that different from you know. Remember back in the day when you would stretch a client mm -hmm. and the client has to relax and you push them PNF. into a stretch, but you don't tell them to activate. You just let's say old school, right? I'm just going to hold your hamstring in a stretch. Very similar. Their CNS is what is preventing that muscle from stretching any further. Right. So I do think that there's some muscle contraction involved, but they call it passive because the person isn't actively trying to. So the force the is weight. basically kind of holding them in that position, yes. pushing them down and, and sustaining that yes. uh, range of motion. And, and this is present in a lot of training methodologies. Uh, I know in the eighties, mm. this was getting somewhat popular. I know in the nineties. This is popular in bodybuilding. Yes. Yeah. In fact, it, it's made its way into uh, and that's why I asked you the term for because there's a there is a term for the one that you do in the workout like interest interest, interest, set, yeah, interest set stretching interest set stretching or uh, they'll say fascial stretching which I don't like that term because the fascia is like the super tough tissue yeah so it's a bit misleading that you're gonna stretch it um, and there's lots of theories you know like one of the the body and this is the 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 good and the bad of of the bodybuilding you know coaches and trainers the good is they observe things that work and they repeat it over and over. And then the bad is they try to, you know, explain it away or explain how it's working. And the explanation is usually wrong, but it doesn't mean the results are wrong. I don't so, think that's necessarily bad. I mean, that's what you would try and do, right? You, you observe something, you see it works. It's like you try and communicate it the best you can. What I, I blame more people that harshly criticize that so much. Well, that's why I think, why, that's that's so, why I think it's I think bad. It's, it's just like, it's like harshly criticizing chi and things like that. Instead of investigating what is going on here and maybe there's, instead we want to, and, th and this is one of the annoying things I can't stand yeah. about our I space. can't understand it, dismiss it. That's right. Or, you know, I, you know, because there's, there's something that they're saying that is. Like is, your explanation is scientifically wrong. Yes. Like yeah. yeah. So then all of a sudden you, we, 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 we hammer it and then other people go, oh, well, that's stupid. I saw some, I saw some really smart guy dismiss that and break it down. That's not true. And so 
so then all of a sudden we dismiss something that there's something there. Well, so yeah. I agree with you. The, pro, the, the reason why I think it's bad is because it does set them up for that, right? So instead of saying, hey, this works, we're not quite sure how oh, it works, okay, yeah. but we see that it works quite consistently. What they'll do is they'll say, here's what we think. We think that we're stretching the fascia. And as the fascia expands, it allows for more, more room for muscle growth. Okay, so that's easy. It's easy to attack that. And then what happens is people attack the results, just like adrenal fatigue. Remember when the wellness people were like, yes. oh, adrenal fatigue, yeah. here's all the symptoms. And then scientists would come out and be like, the adrenals don't get fatigued. Okay, well, really what's happening is there's a dysfunction between or you know, miscommunication, if you will, between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid, and the adrenals. So now that's what they call it, right? They, they, they refer to it as that. It's not adrenal fatigue, but the symptoms are still the same and the solutions are the same, the same. Yeah. So I don't know if we're stretching the fascia. I think what you guys think, my theory, my hypothesis is because it's in this deep stretch position, the CNS maintains some sort of muscle contraction that is placing another stress or demand on the muscle and it's it's a new novel stimulus. Well, not to mention this is where we tend to be the weakest too, right? Is yes. at the end yes. range. At the yep. end ranges of emotion, we are the weakest. And so loading that um and in being in this kind of isometric position, I think you are you're gonna get some recruitment there. I think which, you, yeah, you expand that strength curve just a bit more because right. now we're focusing on a little bit further beyond, you know, just that peak of contraction. So yep. it's like you're you just have more muscle poten potential at that point. Yeah. Tom Platts did this really well. Uh, he was a bodybuilder in the seventies and eighties. And if, in fact, you can look him up. One of the most flexible bodybuilders of all time. This guy would do the splits and just create and very muscular. Right. But he, he did this at the end of every workout. He would do these really deep static stretches and he would talk about how painful it was. Um, so the way to do this, if you want to experiment with this is when you, when you're done training a body part is to grab either a light set of dumbbells or cables, not heavy, because you'll put yourself in a vulnerable position. But let's say I'm doing chest and I'm done with chest. I would grab maybe 20 pound dumbbells and then I'd sit in a fly position and just try to let the dumbbells go down as far as I can let them go mm -hmm. and stretch the pump muscle, right? So for back, I would just like hang from a bar. <clears throat> for biceps, I maybe would grab onto a bar behind me and get into a deep stretch. Uh, for quads, obviously I could sit on my heels. And it's gnarly I've experimented a lot with this and I do see muscle growth from it. I do. It's almost like, now I don't see it like, I, don't, I see this kind of initial growth and then it kind of plateaus a little bit, but nonetheless, you get, so, and it's an easy thing to add, literally a 10 minute of really deep static stretching at the end of your workout uh, now, will get you some of these results. I don't want to recommend this because I don't want, because of the, the, probably the high risk uh, potentially for the average person. But um, I saw a lot of benefits when we would do this uh, actually with, very loaded and so like I, this was my early 20s and this was one of the things i think that helped me get beyond like the 225 bench so back when like my like i don't even think i was even able to bench 225 like two it was getting to the place where i could do 225 i remember my buddies putting 315 on the bar and e each guy standing on your side and then me holding it in the in the straight like just barely off and being in that isometric position yeah. for like five seconds i also remember just racking it and then holding it and just getting the cns used to stabilizing that much weight at the top right. Holding that much and trying to drive that much force from the bottom, yeah. man, I got really comfortable with, with being able. To, and I know you're recommending doing a lightweight in the, that position. This for is these more benefits. of a stretch, like yeah. you're trying to get as much of a stretch as possible. What you're doing is uh, isometric, and that is also yeah. freaking amazing. Well, it's muscle recruitment is yeah. really what you're doing, which is great. Because I mean, I used to do the same thing, and it was really teaching the body, like this is the literal demand you're going to need uh, at this bottom position. And so to be able to like connect to that and understand how much more you have to produce, uh, you know, to, to work on that and then recruit more muscle fibers. I think that's a valuable way to, you know, approach getting beyond what you're capable of. What's, with what's crazy is with isometric stuff, it, all of all the muscle contractions that activates the most muscle fibers. Yeah. When you're pushing against an immovable object as hard as you can, your muscle fibers just all activate because the weight or whatever is not moving. Yeah. And so when people talk about, oh, try to activate more muscle fibers, try to activate, like an, a, a hard isometric will do it better than anything else. An easy, by the way, an easy piece of equipment you could create yourself is you could bolt <clears throat> two chains to the ground. And so you have multiple attachments and then you could literally, you know, if you have collars, attach the chains to collars, put a bar on it, get underneath it with a bench and just push. Mm -hmm. you know, in different positions or squat in different positions and so, just drive into it for 10, 15 I, seconds. I guess what I, I'm confused about or what I can't quite wrap my brain around is how those two ways are that different. And, and the way that I'm communicating 
why would that not be you? Why would you not get all the same benefits that you're talking about in addition to also trying to move this immovable object? Like you're, so you're like, to, like who is going to potentially build more muscle? Okay. And then we'll, we'll say, you, let's say you and I, our routines are identical and everything, everything's identical. Right. The only difference is you take a 20 pound dumbbells and you hold the, 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 the deep, deep stretch. I take the, the barbell and I go into a deep stretch and put 315 on and hold it like, Who's going to benefit the well, most the out of this, and how much are they that much different? They're different. Uh, they both have a different demand on the body. So what yeah. you're doing is much more demanding. It's a different curve, too. Yeah. Like, if I'm driving into something as hard as I can, that's a much bigger demand on the body. It's going to require a little bit more recovery, cause a little more damage than just, you know, sitting in a stretch or holding a stretch, which is definitely more passive. So I think that's the difference. I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. It depends on who you apply it to, what other stresses they have in their in their training. I don't know about applying both at the same time. That might be too much. Yeah, I think that would be I think I think they're and I think they're too similar that you're kind of like They are similar. It's like why why I would probably play with one or the other. I I think I would see myself, let's say I had a really heavy chest training day anyways, I would probably end it with something that you're doing this. Yeah. Versus let's say I'm going to, this would, what I'm doing would be something closer to the beginning of the workout I agree. Where, where I'm fresh. I agree. Because yeah. I want to be able to give everything I got. I 100% agree. I would do the stretch at the end when I already have a crazy pump. Because yeah. by the way, a pump with a deep stretch feels crazy. What you're saying to activate all the muscle fibers. Yeah. Start your workout out with a hard isometric push or contraction, then get into your sets. Yeah. You're more likely to have those muscle fibers it's, be active throughout you know, the workout. It's, you know, it's funny in like what's a similar and you and anybody who's done this before. By the way, this, this is pre-priming and post-priming. Maps Prime, we put this in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So this is this kind of reminds me. Um, yeah, I, I always love like so I was I was uh, deadlifting heavy the other day. Um, I always love to jump up on the pull-up bar after I do a heavy, oh, a heavy yeah. deadlift. You go, you go deadlift 400 plus pounds for a couple singles or triples, and then you jump up on the pull-up bar. You would think you would be fatigued because you just lifted this super heavy weight, but you, I think you, you, you recruit acted, so much. Yeah, you have, you've yeah, recruited so much back muscle that you go to do the pull-up, and, and you, I mean, I yeah. fly up. It's such a wild yeah. feeling. So if you've never experimented with that, so I think that going back to your point, you're making. You're right. I, that's how I would do that. I would do the the three fifteen hole at the bottom. Do that for you know one or two times, and then go into my bench press. Mm -hmm. And I think I would see benefits dude, from that. Dude, speaking of pull ups, yesterday I, I was like, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna just do like one set per body part. I don't have much time, and uh, I got to to pull ups, and I said I'm gonna see how many I can do. I haven't done that in a long time. Fresh, like let's just see how many pull ups I can do. I got to twenty. Really? 20 pull-ups. As heavy yeah, as man. you are right now, too? I'm not super heavy right now. I'm only 206 right now. Oh, you've came down quite a bit. Yeah, because it's the snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping the snoring under control. Did you really get 20? 20 reps at 206. Now, were, could I do that were you, were you watching them, Doug? I was not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, were, were they suspect pull-ups? Were they like, I haven't seen them. Yeah. Uh, they were, no, 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 no. <laughs> they were They were good enough. I definitely, did, I, I definitely <laughs> do, I didn't do the ones where I hang at the bottom. Right. And then, so it was like I'd stop here. And then come all the way okay. up and stop all it. Right. But hanging, Still. if I went at the bottom and hung, I think I'd get like 10, you know, 12. That's yeah, a, yeah, that's that's say, that's where I'm at. Like 10, dude. Yeah. But I do lock it up. But you like also, that. I mean, how do you weigh, how much you weigh right now? <laughs> like 225 at least. Oh, oh that's yeah, not too bad. 230, yeah. Yeah, see, I would do, I would, that, if I was 230, I think I wouldn't be able to do more than 10 yeah. Yeah. myself. So I know that's why I remember when I first uh, started cutting way back in the day. And then I did more pull-ups and I forgot that I was lighter. So I was yeah. like, oh, I'm getting stronger while I'm cutting. This is great. I'm like writing it down. Uh, yeah. Pull -ups oh yeah, are, I lost pull, 10 pounds. <laughs> pull-ups are such a funny thing. Like, I mean, I, I'm doing, I've been doing them pretty consistent in my routine lately. So I, actually I'm pretty strong. I think I did the other day, 12 of them. And I'm like, at some of my heavy, I'm 235 right now. Oh, wow. So for me to rep out 12 at 235, if I got all the way down to 200 right now, I should be able, and if I just kept doing pull-ups and reduce my yeah, weight down yeah. there, I would just, I would fly up there. What so. body fat percentage would you be at 200 pounds? Like 2%? Yeah. Oh, that my, 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 okay. My, you would be shredded. My, my national show, which was amateur going pro was 203. Oh, so, so that's stage weight. Yeah, that's that's stage weight and smaller. I wasn't no like I'm much bigger and I because I, then I went to pro and then I hit pro stage at uh, two thirteen two fourteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I could, but I don't have. I don't think I have nowhere. I don't nowhere near. 
definitely not as close as muscle with as the I lean have. body mass yeah i could easily get down to i think uh 205 to 209 and i wouldn't be as shredded a stage because i don't think yeah. i have as, i'm not training with the, the same volume and frequency i was yeah at the body weight then. i'm at now i probably am sitting around eight percent body fat i guess something like that so i don't i, I don't want to go any lower but the way i'm maintaining it is just just generally not eating as much i mean i'm not really cutting much you know i, I just you know I'll, I'll i'll skip a meal here and there and just not snack and it seems to keep me you know where i'm at it's funny since going yeah. on uh you know trt and then you know I'll, I'll mess around with some of the peptides um here and there it's like all this muscle memory i have from all the years of training really turns everything on which is cool but also it's like if, if i don't keep myself this lean i snore and i hate wearing the freaking shit that makes you not snore either yeah. the cpap or this or that i'm like babe my wife's like put it on i'm like i you don't understand i feel like like Darth Vader. Yeah. Well, it's on. also you like a big I'm, neck. It's like, oh, dude, you're potentially going to have sleep apnea. That yeah. tripped me out. I was like, oh, man. Well, I don't know, too. I also feel it's kind of like going and getting calf implants. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, you, huh? know, you know, you can fix it. That's the, that's what you battle with. The same thing why I won't do it. It's like the same reason why I won't go order the CPAP is because I, I know if I discipline myself to get to get down to low. Wait, what does that mean with calf implants? Has that, has that <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's meaning that you, oh, you don't get that? <laughs> no. it's, it's, it's something you can fix. Going, you could go get calf implants and make your calves look bigger and better, sure. or you could go and you could put a CPAP machine on right. and to yeah, improve yeah, your yeah. sleep. But you know, you're a, you're a professional in that field. You know how to address both those ah, things. Ah, very good. Got it. You get it? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, now. That's, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to connect it to. Yeah, was, was, like, was it that off? Was maybe, that off, Doug? When I, did? I got it, Adam. Maybe okay, thank you. I was like, or, I thought it was an uh, easy uh, analogy. No, that was good. That was really good. It, it yeah, worked. I mean, it, I mean, and, it, and coming from our profession, right? It's different. Like if yeah. it's. I mean, this is something that- You're right. I don't want to do it artificially. Yeah. I want to do it the right way because the, here's the way I look at it yeah. is if I if, if my body's too big, even if it's not body fat, because I was at first I was stubborn because I'm like, screw it. I'm lean. I don't give a shit, you know? Yeah. But look, if my body's just too big- It's telling you. Th that's telling me. Yeah. So if I need to add something to my, to you know, to keep me, to give 100%. me good sleep, then- I'm just too big, no. you know. My my frame is not made to be, you know, heavier than what I'm at right now. Yeah, it no, I isn't. that's to me that's why I haven't because yeah, I I sense. and I know that you know what I'm saying I know I know that I know that my body is giving mm -hmm. me those signs naturally. It's like and it it would fly right in the face of everything we preach and we talk about. Boom! Today's giveaway: the RGB bundle, one of the most popular workout bundles we offer. Maps anabolic, maps performance, maps aesthetic. Here's how you win. Leave a comment the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all of those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. That's the only way we're going to notify you is in the comment section that you won the RGB bundle. And boom, free, awesome, nine months of exercise program. Also, we got a sale going on right now. The Skinny Guy bundle is on sale. has all this great stuff in it. 50% off. And the Fit Mom bundle is on sale. has all this other great stuff. Bundles of programs all 50% off. Go check it out. Click on the link at the top of the description below to get the 50% off discount, both of those bundles. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Bothered, Speaking of yeah. sleep, uh, I was reading some studies on uh, blue light blocking glasses. We're supposed to talk about Felix Ray today. That's the company we work with. Uh, with they, they, they provide blue light blocking glasses, but- The best in the industry. The, well, yeah, they're, they're great, but I was reading about Not insomnia. Not the cheapest, by the way. Huh? Not the cheapest, no, by the way. Go with cheap anything. Oh. I'm, I'm going to do that for now on well, all then commercials. We're get hate. By yeah. the way, not the cheapest. You can yeah. get on Amazon, and get some fake ass shit for twenty bucks if you want. Yeah, dude. I don't, yeah, <laughs> all, that's an, always an option. Yeah, <laughs> it just is. No, but they uh, it, for insomnia. I didn't even realize it. So I think insomnia. When I think insomnia, I think like, oh, this is like a really bad sleep issue. They're testing blue light blocking glasses on insomnia and having relatively good success. Huh. So for people who really have sleep issues who just, it's just like, oh my gosh, I, I can't sleep or wake up through the other night. They put blue light blocking glasses on the people, these people two or three hours before bed and seen significant improvements. What I, what, and, and you know, so for people who suffer from insomnia, this can be a, a, just a terrible, terrible situation. It sucks. If you've ever lost sleep for more than two or three nights, you know how, what a toll that places on the body. And all the treatments for insomnia are like, like they're pharmaceutical and they, <laughs> They have their own side effects. Like people take these sleep medications, end up waking up in the middle of the night, eating food or having sex with their spouse, not remembering it the next day. Like weird side effects, right? Yeah. This is a very easy non-pharmaceutical. Did you know that, Doug? 
I did not know that. Yes. Yeah, no, it does happen. Bro, <laughs> does I'm not making this effects. up. What? There are yeah. people, this is a real, now it's not a huge, it's not a very common side effect, but people will take like, uh, I don't remember, was it Lunesta is one of them? Oh, really? They'll take these pharmaceuticals and then they'll report like the next day their spouse is like, man, we had, it was great sex last <laughs> oh, night. Really? Oh, really? Like, so, so the other person's aware of it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was just yeah. a little concerned but about they, that. But they yeah. themselves <laughs> are like, I don't remember. Or they'll gain weight and they don't know that they're gaining weight. There was this one lady that was gaining weight, couldn't figure out why. And put up hidden cameras to figure out what the hell's going on. She'd wake up in the middle of the night and make herself sandwiches and shit. You didn't go back to bed and not remember it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've, I, you guys, I've trained clients like that. Really? Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've trained clients that had to put like latches and stuff on the. No. Oh, yeah. 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 To lock themselves out? Yeah. Because they would literally get up and sleep, sleep, sleepwalk into the kitchen and eat. Yeah. I'll never forget. I had this guy, this guy Leland. That is crazy. Yeah. It was like he was like 350 pounds, big dude. And uh, that's and, like the perfect excuse, though, you know, at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think as a trainer, that's what, because it was yeah, it's like, it's hard to believe. Him, yeah. It was know? so it's rare. Like, it's yeah. like, come on, bro. He's like, dude, Adam, I have to, I, we, I, I just installed like a latch on there. So I'm like, not. And so I don't know how much of it is like, you're half aware, you're half not aware. You think you're dreaming. You think Either that or you're half aware and then you forget. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but I, I mean, I literally had a client though that that was a challenge. That is crazy. crazy. Well, anyway, they found with blue light blocking glasses, like, Significant improvement in a lot of people. So if you have really bad sleep issues, you know, I test know, it out because it's an easy it's an easy thing to try. If you're waking I know up that, with sex dick, you don't know why. <laughs> what? Blue lights. What? So what? I was probably I'm probably the most. I, I I mean I think everybody else is like the least excited about that investment. And everything like so I was I was very adamant about the investment in Felix Cray because I still so my this is my bet on this right is that. I think that because of how much we continue to adopt, adopt technology and we are the phones are becoming more and more like another limb to us, I see my own behaviors and I'm aware of it and I'm always trying to, to, to beat it. So I got to think that a majority of people have really bad habits around iPads, laptops, computers, yeah. phones, being in the bed with them mm -hmm. and how much that's disrupting sleep. And what I also know about humans is that we are terrible at breaking addictions like that. And so giving you something that will help yeah. mitigate that and that will gr dramatically improve your sleep. So I'm betting on people's inability to discipline themselves to not put their technology down in their bedrooms, but starting more and more research, more and more studies, more and more adverse. Like you just put these on. Exactly. Yeah. And so that it, to me, and I, and Felix Gray is one of the leaders in that space. And so, and they look cool and all the other well, things. Well, the bigger they're clear. The big exactly. That's the big difference because other. Well, people, that was a selling point for me yeah, because I'm orange. I'm guilty of this. Laying in bed watching watching Netflix or something late at night, and I mean, I tried. I remember when we first started this podcast years ago. You would be wearing those orange ones, and I tried yeah. to get on that. I'm like, I can't do this. It ruins the. It changes all the colors of TV. Bro, you want to know what's weird? So <laughs> I put them on. Uh, I I got those orange ones back then, and I put them on because I was gonna eat some food. And it changed the experience of yeah. dining because oh, yeah. now the all my food is orange. Off, yeah, yes. yeah brown, all brown, all those brown colors. Yeah, dude. Oh, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like when ketchup tried to sell their black ketchup. <laughs> yeah, like, that was like, like oh, remember that? Who the fuck wants to eat black? Because it just reminds you of like some kind of like putrid, like rotten or food, blood. right? Like anything black. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like no. I always thought clear Pepsi was cool though, but that never made it either. No, yeah, man. you want your cola it. brown. It, you, it's, it's so it's, it's so ingrained. ingrained yeah it's just like that it, just shows you how gr brilliant marketing though we've done totally because if it would have yeah. been switched the other way around if cola was sold as clear from the very beginning yeah. Yeah. i bet you they would have had the same well, I, well, I, I was thinking like um talking about the sleep stuff like in patterns and everything else like my kids are like super dependent on white noise and, and it, it to me i kind of trip out about it. i'm like is this going to be something they're going to have to work their way through eventually and like have some other option or is this like is this just the thing that they're always going to have to have to sleep and like the association with that? So I'm like, you know, we're, we're, we're trying out right now to, um, you know, try it without it. But then like Ethan's a real light sleeper. That's so interesting. You bring that up, Justin, because I've been wrestling with that with Katrina for since the beginning. Cause she was like, I mean that and like pitch black, she makes his still room. Dependent Bro, on that's it. a really, she, room. she tapes Katrina yeah. tapes the, yes. the light on the, the smoke alarm. Yes. Like, do you cannot fucking see anything? No, bro. Like, there is no light that from lives. the outside of my house. It yeah. looks like I told my wife as honey, it looks like we're making drugs because yeah. his window <laughs> faces out and it's in tin foil. That's she right. put aluminum foil bro, and have, taped around it. Bro, we have, I'm like, what are we making? We have man? all of that. We have, she's, she did the blackout thing. 
then we have the blackout. I mean, there you can not a not an ounce of light sneaks in, and he always has his white noise. Last night he woke up and I had to go up there, and it's because his white noise went off. Yeah, and I'm just like, damn, dude. Yeah, I mean, we've, like, we've gone through all that. I mean, so we've how, trained, loud, we, we've, how loud is it? Because Je Jessica puts white noise in, in Rayleigh's room, and it's loud. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, you can hear it in the other rooms. Like, how the hell she, do, you do you guys have? Do you guys have the the hack or the hatch? Is we do the hatch, and so she, she has another it, one. She runs yeah. it at forty percent, which I don't think is too. No, bad. we have the hatch yeah. on the end of his room. Yeah, and then we have another white noise machine by the door because then when the other kids get up for school, so that's what she does when we go like when we travel. Like hotels yeah. or something like that, she'll put two and two, two or three. Sometimes we've had three white noises going on in a room. Could you imagine? Like, there's like a fucking storm <laughs> competing. <laughs> like, yeah, one's like the rainforest wind, one's yeah. waves, one's like the chirping wave. I'm like, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> But I can't I, sleep in that too much, you know, dude. I mean, I lost this battle because Katrina really has uh, really owned the nights and raising our son and taking care of him. Yeah, and so stuff you can't like that. say shit. And so I can't say shit, <laughs> no. right? So I put my two cents in because I don't really agree. Right. And then she's like, I mean, you can handle him if you want. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'm going to run the white, white noise. noise it is. Yeah, yeah. Say, white it's, noise it is. Yes, it's working. But I'm like, what sucks is now, to your point, I mean, and your kids are much older than mine. I'm just like, I'm so concerned that like we yeah, always are going to have to 12, have 12, dude, and he still has to have it. And and so then it's like if he goes i mean he's actually okay though if he goes and sleeps at another kid's house and like that's what i was concerned about i'm like am i gonna get a phone call like, oh, kids sleep dad because we've had kids stay over and they've had that same problem like they didn't have like all those yeah. real specific every kid is so individual to their like sleep routine and their <clears throat> needs and stuff and so it was like I felt bad because Everett's dealt with this the most because he's younger. And so, like, some of his friends are just, like, so dependent on, like, a specific stuffed animal, a specific uh, type of, uh, like, music. So, I mean, have his we friends wanted far? music. Yeah. I feel like we've gone too far. Yeah, we're, we're intervening, have. dude. Of course like, we have. I don't know. When just I was let a him kid, sleep. When I was a kid, I saw, uh, watch old home videos, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we have a big family. And you see me, I'm sleeping on the, in the stroller or in the car. And it's like 50, it, it, you know, loud ass Italians in the garage, eating, making food, laughing, whatever. Right. And I'm, you know, asleep over there. So I'm like, maybe, I don't know. Are we overdoing it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No, so, same here. Jessica man, manages it. And well, that's I say what, anything and she says, you want to take it? I'm like, well, I guess not. That's how it. I lost that battle. I was just yeah. like, and she's and she like, does all the research she's right. also like that, right? Yeah. And I know what the, they say it's better for their sleep. Yeah. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But then the, the, the counter to that is that, but then you train them to have to have that environment mm -hmm. where, and then, so it's like anything outside of the, a little bit of light creeps in, a little bit of different noise get startles them and they fall versus... I mean, like you said, like I was born that way too. Vacuum mom could be vacuum yeah. cleaning and noise going, music Parties, going. Whatever, yeah, it didn't dude, matter. It I would I would sleep right through it. A so noisy house. Yeah, yeah. But and I we think, turned out okay. Uh, Wait. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Now, okay. So, what are you guys all like in your? I'm curious because this is like this is we're we're touching on like one of the one of the battles in my house, right? Because could and it, tread you, carefully, Adam. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Get everybody in right. This is the same battle. See how I I've set the table with. here, yeah, right? So. <clears throat> Okay, and that, this also is why I think she does this because she is more like this. So one of the things that drives me crazy is we stay a lot of times at um, hotels that are like right on the ocean. And I love to wide open doors, feel the ocean breeze coming in, hear the waves crashing. I, but that allows potential you know, street lights or neighbor something is something light to creep in. And like yeah, Katrina, dog just, bark and you're she like, just yeah. can't, she can't have any light creeping into our room. And at our house, I mean, you can, you can, from my house, you can smell the, the ocean and stuff like that. So I want it wide open. We have this awesome little balcony area too. So it like blocks from like hardcore direct wind. So I just, I want to sleep with it wide open every night and she just can't. And she, and I can't get her to wear a mask because she has, Fake eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's, what the fuck, dude? There's no compromise here oh, for me, man. man. So you mean to tell me I gotta? I get to I'm the, the one that wears the princess mask. I gotta be right. Really? Like, yeah. Do you? I, do. Yeah, the, yeah, but I usually take like a pillow, smash in my face. But I've learned because yeah, I don't like like all this like crazy light coming in. Courtney wants everything open. Oh, that's funny. So Courtney's more. She like actually me. likes the light coming in because it helps her wake up. And I'm like, yeah, but like. I don't want to wake up that early all the time. So you want to hear something interesting? Well, so, first, where are you? Where is you? Oh, I'm like you. So yeah. Jessica is extremely light sleeper, extremely light sleeper. Um, and that's more common. It's usually the the woman 
the wife that is more that is a lighter sleeper, especially if they have kids. Which is ironic because you think evolutionary because you love to go back to that all the time. You would think that us as the protectors no. would get woken up. So no, we protect our wives. I read about this. You know what's funny? Yeah, no. I read about this. So when a when Courtney a has when, like superpowers for hearing when a woman has a baby, her body becomes primed for vigilance. Oh, okay. So her hormones change. Everything changes to become more- Okay, that makes sense. More anxious right, right. to hear anything with the that baby. That makes sense because she's taking care of him yes. 90% of the time. And so she now all of a sudden her senses are heightened to where she can hear, so or see, I, like whatever. So I, I experienced this. So, I, so obviously my oldest is 17. So I have 17 years of this. I won't I won't wake up typically if the baby cries or whatever and Jessica will tell me the next day. And I remember this even with my older kids. Yeah. But if there's a noise that sounds like someone's coming in the house- I jump out of bed like a like a monster. So it's very interesting. But yeah, the woman's body, it becomes primed for hypervigilance. So sleep, so it's funny because Jessica's like, I just I can't sleep like I used to. And other moms are like, he'll never go back. She's like, what the hell? So we did research and they're like, yeah, it's just, you, once you become a mom, it's like your, your body is just, high, it's primed. It's primed to not really get too much sleep because you got to be ready all the time. <laughs> All these, all these women are like, I'm not Stay having Stay ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, up, that's dude. like, it's such a hard compromise, right? Like the, in that situation. And it, and it's so rough for me because that is like, I mean, you want to talk about one of my favorite things in the world is to, to listen to the ocean crashing. Bro, and, you don't even know. Jessica is such that. a light sleeper. If I go downstairs, so bedroom, right? Go down the stairs, go around the corner, I'm downstairs. And I take a supplement so that you hear the pills go through the bottle. She wakes up. <laughs> oh god she's like get all your supplements i can just imagine your house thing because i know wow. you she she has to be mad at you at least fucking two out of three days dude. yes because i'm loud <laughs> yes i know you know how hard it is for me so i'm like blah 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 you know <laughs> yeah so it's a but i think we found our nice our nice meeting speaking of sleep you guys would love this i didn't film this i should have filmed this but so at night when we put aurelius to bed jessica started praying before bed with him so she gets down on her knees and then he does the whole thing. So he started doing this thing where he he holds his hands like this and then he just does a bunch of gibberish. And then he goes, <laughs> you got a video and then he goes, that, and then he goes amen. Awesome. And then he gets up and goes to bed, dude. It's the cutest <laughs> oh, thing. That's so cute. It's the cutest thing you've wow, ever seen in your that's life. So cute. He's so cute. I love it. Oh, oh the other night we're having another thing is funny. This was funny. We were eating dinner and I sit him in his uh his high chair and he's like, he's leaning. <laughs> he's leaning like this. Yeah. So I'm like fixing him, you know? And then he'll lean like this way. He don't want to sit. I'm like, wait, sit straight. What are you doing, dude? And then I smell. I'm like, oh, you, you pooped. Oh, he <laughs> doesn't want to sit on it. It's, come on, dad. Bro, uh. I can't, I can't fix him. You know what I mean? Trying to straighten him out. Oh, Poor kid. Brutal. I don't want to sit. His oh, I don't want to sit on that. We were laughing so hard because he didn't want to get his diaper changed either. You know, he uh, wanted to keep eating. Of course not. Yeah, so you want to keep playing. I'm like, why is he got like a gangster yeah. thing? I'm like, sit straight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I can't move inside. I had a funny thing with, with Ethan. Um, and he's like, he's funny because uh, he knows like, he doesn't like swear or anything around us, and like, I, but I know he does with his friends every now and then. And he's like, you know, he's a little teenager. Yeah, what grade is he in right now? So he's seventh grade. Oh, for sure, yes. Right, yeah. and and his friends, are, it's that whole age where you just want to say whatever because you can and yeah. like you're cool and that's what uh, people on TV do and whatever. Yeah. And uh, so I hadn't like caught any sense of him trying to do that or anything, but then Courtney found this note. Uh, near his phone, um, which he uses for an alarm clock too. And it was like a, a, a message for him. It was like, it's like, get up, you lazy effing bastard. <laughs> 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 like exclamation marks. Like he's trying to like hammer himself to actually wake up. And he, he's, instead of 7 a.m., he put it for 7 p.m. So it went off like later. And <laughs> screwed it up. And we were just dying, dude. You know, we're like, dude, <laughs> so many things you just did wrong there, pal. Poor kid. Yeah. Hey, did you guys, one of the, this has to be one of the most interesting headlines I've ever read in my entire life. Oh, just, I, please tell me you're going to bring up what I think you oh, are with yeah, the oh, Beyond yeah. Burger guy. Oh, yeah, dude. Yes. So, so Beyond Meat, right? Oh, Beyond oh Meat. somebody sent this to me, dude. Tell me what So this is the company. Make sure it's is. Beyond Meat, Doug. I'm saying the right company. Yes, yeah, it's Beyond Meat. Okay, the COO. So, well, I wrote it there, but oh, make sure okay. it's right. So Double operating. Check. So the Beyond Meat C COO. Um, now, here, let's, let's paint the context. Beyond Meat is a company that makes vegan products that <laughs> taste like uh, their animal product counterparts. Right. So they make the burgers. They taste good. Oh, it's vegan because we don't like to kill animals. We like to not hurt animals and it's great and it's, you know, whatever. 
Yeah. This fucking dude got in a fight with someone and bit the guy's nose off. It was this after it was after a Razorback football <laughs> game. So Saturday is when college football is. He, he bit was, a person's nose. He was at it. The oh, car wow. a Subaru what? a Subaru bumped his psycho. car. He got out, punched the window out first. So he punched the person's Subaru window out. Then the guy in the Subaru gets out and got in his face. When he got in his face, he fucking bit his nose like the penguin, bro, yeah. from Batman. Like Homeboy so, was hungry. Yeah, dude, crazy. I, I, listen, you know, nutrient deficiencies can cause lots of irritability. Um, the craving for me. He looks like someone who, he, doesn't he look like someone that would bite someone's <laughs> he nose? Does. He looks like he an does. angry dude. He, he like, kind of looks like the penguin. He looks like uh, every guy that's just, ever eh. tried to flip me off on, yeah. the, on the freeway. Right. Like, like that older guy that's just, yeah. he's angry because every annoying parent that's like yells at, you know, the coaches from the stand, like, ah, get yeah. my son. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. like, I got a bad marriage. You know, my kids yeah. turn, I don't have a good relationship with my son. I don't know why he won't talk to me. Right. How gangster you got to be though to bite somebody's nose. Insane, I mean, dude. I mean, I would, do, psycho. I would like, do that. I would do that, but it would be loose. in defense. Like, so I'm crazy. Yeah, if you like feel that. like you're about to get killed. Yeah, like, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, of if, course. if somebody, if somebody came at me, like I'm like that, there's no, it's fighting and it's fighting for your life. So there's yeah, no, they're like choking you out or something. whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I do some crazy, but like, yeah. I would never attack somebody and then think I'm going to bite your nose <laughs> first. Like, that's just that's weird. That's your go-to, dude. Yeah, like, yeah that's weird. Window home. No, dude, I had a buddy that was, <laughs> it's just a true story. He was getting beat up and he said he feared for his life. So he grabbed the guy's balls and just squeezed I, them and twisted. I did that in a fight. And twisted yeah. as much I as I did that possible. in a fight. And he's like, actually an effective move. Bro, he really told me, he goes, he, goes, he yeah. stopped immediately and I won. He goes, it's the most effective self defense. I was, I was, I was, yeah, I was actually man. fighting a wrestler. This was when I was in high school. This kid that was a wrestler and, he was, and we got into a fight. And I, by the way, I tried to avoid the fight forever and everything like that. It still came to me, whatever. We got in the fight and I, I was whooping his ass. And he, at one point, he went to roll on top of me. And that, that's exactly what I did. And that was this, that was this one moment where he looked like he might roll on top of me. And, and then everybody that was watching, he grabbed it. Everybody was yelling. Like, move. like it wasn't fair. And I'm like, it's a street fight, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're, we're not on mats here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. This, is, this is in high school wrestling. You know what I'm no. saying? Like, there's yeah, rules. Get out of here. That's what you get. This, this, is you the, get. Hey, this is the conversation I have with my daughter. As I tell her, I said, if you're ever in a defense situation, I said, you 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 go for their eyeballs. Eyeballs. You go and for balls. Their, their ball balls. Yeah. And you just, and your goal is to rip them off their body or poke their <laughs> eyeballs out because that's what'll save your life. Yeah. You don't punch him in the face. You're not going to hurt anybody in the face. You're not going to do anything with any your whatever you think. No, he's going to make him angry. You just got to take out his eyeballs or his balls balls. The balls. The balls. Eyeballs, Focus balls, on the ball balls. ball yeah. area. Anyway. Good, good advice. You know, you uh you brought up uh your your son praying and I actually wanted to ask you about something you read recently cuz you had brought it up the other day and you said the there was you read something about the decline in Christianity. Yeah. Is, is that true? Is that yeah. like a, I so I read that in the book I Jen just that this generation is uh, is less and like there's more atheists, less and less religious mm. people. Yep. Like as, as as we're evolving. so what what is it? It's down to sixty four percent. Speculate. I mean, there's a few <laughs> things too. Even with the pandemic, I'm sure it put a dent because of just the loss of community and being able to even meet up. And I know personally, like you know, some family members and people that have just like okay, we're because of the way like certain churches handled it, the way that uh, things kind of played out. They just well, so oh, interesting, yeah. In that article that I read, so first off, in the 1980s, it was, uh, or 60s, uh, something like uh, north of 80% of Americans identified as Christian. Now it's 64% and declining. And they said within the next few decades, it'll be less, it'll be a minority of Americans that identify as Christian. So this was a major religion. So more, more than half still do though? 64%. Oh, that's so weird. To, maybe it's just where we live. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, it, it to me, I it's, mean, it depends it on the region. The, yeah. It depends heavily on the Regional, region. Regional, I'm right? sure, yeah. They also said that religion, <clears throat> people who affiliate re religions tend to go up when there's social upheaval or economic disasters, which kind of makes sense. You turn to spiritual practices when you feel like shit's out of control. Yeah, there's nowhere else to go so you and look you, up. And you need help. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's it's a good thing to speculate on. I know Carl Jung uh, was, you know, he, this is one of the most famous psychoanalysts. He talked about <clears throat> the dangers of the declining beliefs in God and actually predicted uh, totalitarian governments, communism in particular, and, mm -hmm. and it sure enough happened, right? Because right. what he understood about human psychology is if you don't worship anything, you still worship something. You always worship something. Maybe not consciously, but right. it's your top value. So whatever your actions point to, that's what you worship. And people think worship means, oh, this is what I say I believe in. No, no, no. What you worship is what your actions show. 
And so when you say, I don't believe in or I don't worship God and your actions don't move in that direction. They move in some direction. And it's usually, what do they say? Money, Money, power, sex. Power, pleasure, um, honor, I think are the ones that tend to move. And those can be very self-destructive. So um, spirituality and a belief in the kind of like the esoteric has been Mm -hmm. a part of human civilization for as long as we can remember. It's a big part of the advancement of human civilization. So people will point to all the bad stuff it's done. But I think a good argument can be made that it's an essential part of humanity. We even have a God part of the brain and a God gene they've identified. So, you know, it's like that saying, you know, before you tear down a fence, you got to understand why Mm. it's up in the first place. Will there be unintended consequences? I think so. I definitely think so. I think what will happen is human reasoning, as great as it is, is really can move in some crazy directions. And when you eliminate this kind of objective morality that you agree upon, then reason starts to get real twisted. And we start to say things like, well, if it feels good, it's good. And well, I'm stronger than that person. What's the big deal? I'm still helping though. It's, you know, and all kinds of weird shit. Is, is postmodernism considered a religion at this point? I mean, it, it, it seems like the cultural shift has uh, moved into, well, we're, we've got like all those answers now. And it's just really about um, you know, whatever the, the culture is purporting is the new standard for morality. Yeah, it's... Um, well, see, what that's that's not objective; it's subjective. Right. So, well, what I it, think it shifts is, and changes. All what the time. I think is right is different than what you think is right, and they're both just as valid and whatever. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, we're such social creatures; we have to all agree on a base moral fabric. Otherwise, chaos ensues, and things can get really. I mean, shit. Humans. Well, it's not grounded in anything. Humans reasoned uh, why it was okay to to you know have sex with children. Uh, for mm-hmm. many times because, oh, why? Oh, they like it too. So well, you're sex with that. animals. <laughs> I like it too, or, or they like it, or, yeah. you know, killing other people. Well, you know, uh, you, um, what's it called when they, when they believe in uh, killing off entire groups of people for the betterment of- the Genocide? Uh, yeah. Not genocide, but um, uh, eugenics. Eugenics, right. Eugenic, they reasoned eugenics. Well, this is better for society. If we kill all the people with bad genetics or we kill- all the people that we think are are inferior, it's better for humanity. And so like reason can take us yeah. to some really crazy it's places. It's amazing what you can reason your way through, is, yeah. especially uh, in the medical sense too. And like what used to be um, completely uh, immoral in terms of practice and like things we'd never think we'd ever see in terms of like um, experimentation with, with human beings and yeah. things like that's all kind of like re- resurfacing and, and, and being justified. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a movement right now to, and I don't know how long this movement has been around and if it's something that's just more prevalent because of social media and you can see it now, but this idea of justifying like pedophiles and stuff yeah. that, mm-hmm. that it's that to the point where we're not supposed to call them pedophiles anymore. It's supposed to be somebody, uh, uh, like, what is it? Like minor a, attracted. Yeah. Minor attracted person, person or something. It's, or something. A, it's a, it's a, what do they call it? Minor uh, like attracted a, like, persons. It's M-A-P. like a sexual, um, identification. It's a type of sexual identification, like, like, like heterosexual or homosexual. Yeah. No, that's not going to fly. No, 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 no. But it, they're trying to though. I know. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. seen, I've seen videos of, of teachers trying to explain that to other, other people and stuff like that. So now what I, what I don't know, and I'm aware of is that, you know, we do have this these crazy tools now to be able to see videos, to see clips, to see things all the time. Has that all? Has there always been these weird outliers that have been saying weird shit like this? Go back to the major empires. <clears throat> yeah. It was all it was all normalized. The Roman Empire, the 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 Greek Empire, like these things were normalized at at some point. It was part of society. Um, so but yeah, I, dude. Yeah, but I know what you're saying. Like it's it's definitely like it's getting a lot more stage in terms of like a fractional percentage of the population that might have any of these kind of um, draws, uh, you know, towards that, like, but are being uh, definitely like shined upon now because it's like, it's used as uh, more gasoline to um, get angry and upset. Well, I mean, regardless of where your position is, you can't deny the data and the data is clear. The data shows that people who are, who have uh, a spiritual practice, so I'll say spiritual practice because that encompasses Things like all the religions plus maybe meditation, consistent, right? So not that you meditate once a week, but this is part of your practice. They live, People who have a spiritual practice live longer, are happier, stay married, have better kids, have happier kids, tend to be he- you know healthier. So, I mean, that's the data. So the data is objective and it's clear. Now you can argue why that happens, but it doesn't matter across the board. It, in, people's outcomes tend to improve. Depression goes down, anxiety goes down. 
Um, I think it's a part of human evolution. We we need to have some kind of a belief system that we consciously move towards. Otherwise, unconsciously, we end up worshiping shit that uh, doesn't serve us. Speaking of worshiping and depression, you just reminded me of the the actors and the actors getting pumps before their their. Yeah, I was wrong on that, wasn't I? <laughs> Great that, transition. You like that or yeah. what? So, I was wrong on that. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, Justin keeps, I, I love that Justin uh, keeps throwing salt on the wound over there that you were wrong again. And there's lots of these clips. You got to, hey, man, uh, you got to capitalize on that one time. And yeah. I'm actually not, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually not bringing it up exactly. to do that. It actually just, because we've been on, in our personal thread, we, we jab at each other all the time when, when we find information to prove the other guy wrong, yeah, right? So, like, I get the, every robotic fucking bathroom cleaning thing sent to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just, I love that too. Yeah, yeah. we're so gonna fly them. Yeah. We're gonna have. I really just like supercharging your guys. Yeah, it's towards all each the time, other. right? Yeah. But actually, what I was, <clears throat> I was bringing that up, and I thought, man, imagine, imagine how challenging that is uh, as it as an actor and actress. It t- in today's time more than ever to be highlighted and you and all this stuff like so like uh, you know uh, Hugh Jackman and these people that we see on on television our image of them is what hollywood presents to us yeah mm-hmm. so, and not not only is it like edited it up and filtered and some of that and now they're doing pumps on it. it's like imagine the the psychological warfare they have to go through every day to to feel like they need to live up to that that oh, image yeah. you get yeah. all this love, I mean, all this attention all it's because hard for, of the way you look it's 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 hard for a normal person it's hard for a normal kid or an average person who has their little community of people that, that see themselves like that to try and live up to body image yes. it's, imagine on that scale where millions yeah, of you're people mega celebrity yes see you like this like the pressure of i can't go out anywhere if i don't look like that have you heard what zach efron said about being on baywatch so on Bay, remember when he was on Baywatch and yeah. he was like shredded uh, he was super all the time. Shredded, yeah. He's like he's like I, I had insomnia. I felt terrible. Mm-hmm. I had anxiety because he maintained like five percent body fat throughout that whole shoot. Yeah. He goes, it was unhealthy. I had to take diuretics. He goes, it was it wasn't great. It was terrible. I don't think it's a good thing for people to aim for that at all. Speaking of him, I, I, is it true that I, that he just got in like an accident or something and like they had to wire his jaw shut and it, he looks like visibly different now oh i don't like know. it transformed his face so i didn't know that yeah he almost looks like um what's his name rob low a little bit oh. like he it almost like transformed his face to where it's like is that because it hasn't healed yet i don't know like oh. i just saw some pictures of him and they're comparing it to how he used to look and like, up, oh wow see. that looks that i didn't looks even know that happened i don't quite know about different that. what do you know how long ago it was yeah, or what kind I of accident I, or? I just recently came across like a week ago or so i came across a couple pictures of it and was like wow I wonder what happened. 2013. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sal, with the 20 year old news. Hey, hey do you guys know Damn, that? dude. Do you guys know we landed uh, on the moon? Do you guys know that? Uh, I gotta tell you guys. Do you guys, no, you guys know the rocket launch, dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we land him. on the moon? Dude. He's a you know, he's a really good looking guy. Dang it. Him and the dude that played Superman, forgot his name. That oh, super yeah. good looking guys. I know. They're like like literally chiseled out of like a, a comic yeah. book or something. Every once in a while I'll see a dude on TV and I'll be like, damn. He's got the butt chin and everything. Yeah, and I'll get this, immediately insecure. That butt chin is like yeah, that's but you the know strong that he, super. Then he hero sucks look. at something else, bro. He's probably terrible in bed. Yeah. Or he has a little uh, pee pee. You know well, what I'm saying? Or <laughs> well, he's awesome. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll be just, sitting there. It happens that way. No, I'll send Je- I think Jessica's full of shit too, because I'll watch um like Superman, you know? And I'll be like, damn, that dude, he's like, he's like the best looking guy. Like I ever seen like He's not really my type. And I'll be like, mm, yeah. Are you and then she sees him in The Witcher and yeah. she's like, whoa. Are you just saying that right now? Because yeah. I feel like you're lying. I don't know how you can't think he's super handsome. Yeah, I wonder who. I wonder whose wife yeah, be is honest. It would be more honest about like hot guys or not. Oh, Who's Courtney all day. She, like, <laughs> she <laughs> throws it in my face, dude. Like, <laughs> just as like, she's like, like if Thor was here right now, I'll like, oh, make out in front of you. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Yeah. Oh my God! Would she really say that? She'd say that just a, just a jab. Well, of she course, not take of course, it, of it's course. Just a total jab. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. It's funny. Like she's funny, dude. Uh, that's funny. Uh, well, yeah. speaking of faces, uh, did you guys? I got. I got. I don't know if I shared this before, but Caldera did some. Uh, they published some clinical tests on their skincare products. I'm gonna read these to you. I don't know if you. I don't remember you talking about clinical tests. So they did a clinical test. This was with men. And this is percentage of people who saw improvement, okay? And, the, and, the, and this was in radiance and luminosity, healthier skin, improved fine lines and wrinkles, smoother skin, less dry, and even skin tone. Ready? 96% reported healthier looking skin. 91% reported smoother looking skin. 91% reported less wow. dryness. 
showed improved radiance and luminosity. 85% showed more even skin tone. 87% showed improved appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Wow. That's like, yeah. you don't get that. Yeah, yeah. you're batting damn near 100 on that. That's you awesome. don't get that with uh, anything, uh -uh. with any kind of product. By so. the way, also not the cheapest product on the market. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm going to just drill that home to our audience. Well. It it up. Like until, that. until I don't have to answer that no more. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> all right, I got a quiz. The cheapest, I, just the best. I got a quiz for you, Adam. Okay. I got a good quiz for you. Just I, for me? I can't wait to hear your uh, answers on this. Okay, over here. So did you know that scientists identified in a study that there's three types of female orgasm? Yeah. Do you know what they are? G-spot and, and clitoris. <laughs> no. What you, <laughs> <laughs> you almost got that exactly. Quick to answer. <laughs> what, what, like, also <laughs> anal. <laughs> hey, Adam, no. Yeah. No, that's not what it is. <laughs> okay, well, tell me. So first off, this did is you, crazy. Like, you speculate on <laughs> yeah, the answer we like did. <laughs> We called that, dude. Yeah, I'm like, he's going to uh, say some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's yeah. a myth. The hand, <laughs> the penis, and yeah. the... Okay, no, that's not it. Okay, so good guess, though. So first off, the study's fascinating. So they did a study with a biofeedback vibrator. I didn't even know they made these. It's a Bluetooth connected lioness wow. dildo. And with this, lioness. with this, they can identify different types of pelvic floor contractions along with other measurements to see what's happening in the body when these women had orgasms. And then of course, use their subjective experience. I felt like this, I felt like that, wow. right? So they gave this vibrator to these women and these women used it on themselves. And to see what was going to cure on. Cure their hysteria. <laughs> to, to see what was going on. So the sex toys have sensors that detect pressure, as well as instruments to measure temperature, a gyroscope, and an accelerometer, <laughs> all of which get wow. transmitted to a server <laughs> so, via Bluetooth. So much science. The data collected appears to show the three types of orgasm. So there's first, the first one's called a wave Ooh, orgasm. Wave orgasm. A okay. short burst of pelvic contractions that were preceded by an ent uh, entraining rhythm of pelvic floor tension and release. So that's the wave. Ooh. Then there's the volcano. Oh, mm. this is late. So I was set up wrong on this one. I'm, hey, thinking, I'm thinking like where we get it, not like the actual hey, I like say where. type. Like like the, the, <laughs> I would have got it wrong too. Don't yeah, worry. yeah, yeah. This is, this is the gusher. There's a, no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yes, yeah, Justin. By the way, by the way, they did a study I'm on that too. Thank it's, you. It's urine. It's a real, okay. It's mostly urine. It's right. a real Sorry. Thing, anyway. Volcano, orgasm hey. preceded by increasing- <laughs> Most guys should know that, by the way. Orgasm <laughs> preceded by increased upward pelvic floor tensions. And then there's an avalanche. Higher pelvic floor basal contractions maintained throughout the self-stimulation, but a downward contraction profile during- and after orgasm. Okay, give me the give me the three names again because I, I can't get gusher out of my head. Because no, nope. what, what are the three? Wave volcano. Wave volcano and, and avalanche. avalanche. Wow. Yeah. So tonight when you're come home, you're yeah, like, hey, babe, was that a volcano? These, these natural natural disasters. Yeah. Uh, now, no. okay. Did they, did they go further to uh, like ask these women if they individually prefer different ones or if? Um, didn't say that. That's a good question. Like, yeah, Could they do like three back to back, or didn't say that either, no. Justin. But you know what's <laughs> that interesting? Would, that'd be the goal. Right? Lame yeah. study. <laughs> Just, He's such a guy. Yeah, to hit the trifecta. Hit the trifecta. Yeah, dude, right? I want the trifecta Come on. too. <laughs> who, who out there isn't thinking that? Yeah, but I'll send you guys the film of all the different. No, I'm just kidding. Make that. But uh, what's what's uh, what's interesting about this is just it highlights how much more complex. The it just highlights how much better sex is for yeah. women than it, it is feel even way for men. Better for, what? Know. It just highlights how much better sex is for women well, than is men. You get a trade you get off. One type. You get a trade off though. You got. Yeah, but they need a whole story and everything ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes forever. <laughs> Like, you know, this is a downfall. <laughs> well, okay. we just, just, like, you have to dress in a tool uh, belt and right. not wear a shirt <laughs> exactly. around. You got to compliment for like 15 hours. Like, you got to uh, clean the house. You got to exhausting. Like at, the, at that point, I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> one hand pats, uh, one hand rubs. No, it's uh, it, this highlight's very interesting, but there are there's a trade off. Men orgasm much easier and more frequently. So w during sexual intercourse, men almost always orgasm. What did John? What did John, women much less often? What did John? So Got what did John Gottman mm -hmm. say when we interviewed him just recently? He said like all women men need women need, some, need women need a, a good re you know that's it no men, women need a reason men need a place just a place. Yeah. <laughs> that's an old saying. I thought that was a great line. I know. That sums it up. I know. Anyway, very interesting stuff. I love that. You know, every once in a while, scientists study things that are good. So yeah, that's, that's, good job, science. Dude, saving the, the world. world. Thank you. you One vagina. Real time. science. Hey, check this out. You probably drink bottled water, but the problem is it's plastic bottles. It's terrible for the environment. You can't really recycle it well. It's just not good. Well, check out this company. It's called Path. Uh, first off, it's manufactured 100% in the United States, and it's a recyclable bottle, 100% aluminum 
recyclable bottle. Looks good, and it's reusable. Literally, you could drink the water, and then you got yourself a water bottle that you could put whatever you want in there, protein shakes, drinks, whatever. So it's super good for the environment. It's uh, It comes in still, alkaline, and sparkling. It tastes good. It's great, minimal water. Um, and it's again, it's great for the environment, and the price is phenomenal. It's not more expensive. Go check this company out. Go to drinkpath.com, and then use the code MINDPUMP and get 10% off your entire purchase. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Scott from the UK. Scott, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on and giving me uh, your time today. Um, Just a a bit of background on me. So I'm 40 years old and uh, always been pretty active and healthy. I'm uh, ex-military, so being in shape was uh, never really an issue. It was part of the job. Uh, However, since leaving that environment about three or four years ago, I've sort of struggled to find structure in my workouts and and motivation um, and not really followed any sort of programming until I found you guys and and the MAPS programs. Um, So I really love your your programs and how they're set up. Uh, I'm currently on MAPS Anabolic and I also have um, Performance Anesthetic. Uh, I've found that the workouts in Anabolic are taking me about an hour to complete. Um, and I would imagine that the, the workouts and the other programs are going to be pretty similar, and that's where I'm really struggling to remain consistent with those workouts. Um, I have a busy career, family, uh, job. I travel a lot, um, so fitting in sort of our workout even two, three times a week uh, is a bit of a struggle. So uh, I was really interested in uh, the episode and the, the talks you guys have done on the sort of shorter, more frequent workouts and the benefits they can give you in terms of sort of gains and consistency. Um, So I guess my question really is, um, with your programming, how would you or how would they be suited um, to shorter, more frequent workouts? Or are they even suitable for splitting up into those sort of 20-minute-a-day workouts? Or would you lose some of the benefits that those programs are intended for? And then as a a follow-up to that, sorry, um, With the twenty-minute workouts, how how do you approach sort of warm-ups and some of the other aspects of the programs, like the the trigger sessions and, and mobility movements? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So um, we are we will have a program coming out that's going to be specifically programmed in this way. However, you can take <coughs> traditional workout programs and fit them in this type of a protocol. So with Maps Anabolic, there's a couple ways you can do this. One way would be to do you know, let's say each exercise asks for three sets. You do one set of each exercise in three workouts. Okay, so now you're doing, instead of two workouts, you're doing four workouts or five workouts, and you're doing one set per exercise. The other way you could do this is you could simply break up the workout itself. So you're doing, you know... Uh, half and half. First half, yeah. yeah upper half, body, half, upper body, half. lower body type of deal. Exactly. And that would be, you know, 30-minute workouts. Or you could break it up even more if you'd rather do it on a daily basis and do two exercises a day, a day mm-hmm. type of deal. So the volume is the, is the same. The frequency is the same. You're just working out more often, but hitting the body parts uh, just as frequently as you would normally. Now, trigger sessions in this particular case, I would do one a day, uh, later on in the day. So separate it by a couple hours from your workout. So with something like this, if you did a 20 minute workout, you know, two, three hours later or later in the day, um, I would do a, a single trigger session. So that's kind of how it would be broken down. As far as warm ups are concerned, um, your warm ups, you, you could still do a five minute priming session or do a set uh, to warm up and then jump into your workout. It's going to take some time to get used to it. And here, now, here's what I found, though. What I found is the because of the frequency of training, I don't. I find that I don't need to warm up as long as I. Uh, and you don't need as much intensity either. No, I, I just I just don't need to because you know if I'm doing most of my body five days a week, I, I it almost carries over is what I'm noticing. Now I don't have any studies or data to support this. This is just off my personal feeling. So you're going to have to kind of play with this uh, a little bit. I think that uh, what we have coming, Scott, in in two week, two and a half weeks or so is perfect. In fact, it'll be Doug, a lot easier. Doug, is it too early to give him access? At what point will we'll, it's not quite ready? So yeah, maybe another week or so. Maybe maybe you follow up. Maybe follow up with me, Scott. I'll give it to you, okay? Because I I, I really the thing that the I don't know if this is a challenge. This really depends if this is still going to be a challenge for you, right? If you actually take anabolic. 
and you split it up and now it becomes like a six day program. I don't know if we're solving your problem because if you're a really, really busy guy and three, three hours a week is hard, whether you split it up in six half hour workouts or uh, three hours, no matter how you draw it up, may be a uh, challenge. And that's why we wrote this program that's coming out. It's even shorter. It's, it's supposed to be, it's like, it's a lot more minimalistic. So it gives you the option to double it up. And then when you double it up, it becomes a 30 minute workout or it's even shorter than that. And so we, we, we spent, we spent time in programming that for some, somebody who's kind of a beginner and then somebody who's advanced too. So I think that from what I'm hearing from you, that program uh, that we got coming will be perfect. Yeah. And so if you follow up with me in the next week, just the same, same email, uh, I'll make sure you get early access to that. I think uh, I think you'd be a great a great person. You're, you're the person I think we were thinking about when we when we wrote that program. Yeah. yeah, Scott. So let me ask you a question. Would you find it easier to do four or five 20 minute workouts during the week than to do two one hour workouts like you're currently doing? Yeah, I, I think I would just with my my work schedule and travel and you know get into the gym and and, and sorting family out. I think. Um, that's why I was interested in, in that information. That the sort of twenty minute workout is going to be easier for me, more frequently than a sort of big block of training on a few days a week. Yeah, that's what we found too. Training clients. I mean, we've we've done this for a long time with clients um, in that particular situation. Uh, you know, on its face, you feel like uh, maybe it's harder because it's every day. No, it's actually easier to find you know twenty minutes a day than it is to find an hour twice a week for busy people. So, um, I, you know, starting now you could do what I said about with maps anabolic and then in a few weeks, um, reach back out to us and we'll, we'll hook you up with the next program. That's brilliant. Thanks guys. You got it, my friend. Yep. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. You got it. Wish you would have been more excited about giving him a free. <laughs> <laughs> it's the time difference. Nice. He's tired, bro. Yeah. Guy's working a lot. He's got these long workouts. Yeah, give him a break, dude. Come on, yeah, give no, him some. No, bro, he's English military. We need, need to, we need to cut supercharge him. Cut, like, cut him some workout. slack. Like, this is me. This is how I look all the time. <laughs> Shit's going down. This is He'll it. He'll kill you, dude. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? We yeah. should have, we should have talked about it. I feel like we're getting so I didn't tell you guys this, but I was talking to Katrina last night. She's catching up on emails and stuff, and she's like, Man, ever since you guys talked about the those short workouts, we get, we are getting so yeah, many flooded. Emails. Yeah, we hit a nerve that everybody yeah. wants. We to hit a nerve. Us. There's a lot of different ways to it's do this. It's cool when we figure that out, though. Like when people like want something, it's like, oh wow, there's nothing sure. like that on the market. And it's like, oh yeah, duh, we should create something like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, it's just uh, it's it's funny because uh, whenever we come up with ideas, we got to look back to how we solve problems with clients. Mm -hmm. I did this for years with clients, and it was just such an effective strategy. I can't, I can't make you know, to the gym twice a week for an hour. I just right. can't do that. And I remember being like, well, what, can you do 15 minutes a day or, or, well, yeah, that's it what was always do. spliced out of like whatever program you were already totally. running with them. We just would always like have to like totally. kind of adjust it. You cut yeah. the fat, cut that's the fat, it. focus on the, the lifts that are going to give us the biggest bang for the buck. And yeah. And let's, let's make no mistake. The most, the, the factor that should be considered the most for most people when it comes to your workout program is, is this something yeah. I can do consistently? What you can stick with. That's it, because uh, you know I've said this before: a subpar program done consistently will outperform the best program done inconsistently. So, whenever you're looking at a workout program, that's the first thing you should consider. Don't look at the program like this is the best workout. This is what the the, the highest level powerlifters or bodybuilders do. If it's something you can't do consistently, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. That's the number one factor you should consider because the the fail rate with workouts is north of eighty five percent after just I don't know six months. And it's not because the programming is bad. It's because people can't be consistent. So that's the problem to solve. And uh, that's the one that we're tackling with this. Our next caller is Christian from Louisiana. Christian, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, first off, I want to say uh, thank you for all the content. Uh, I've been listening for about three years. Um, you guys help me a lot, uh, not only in the gym, but at home, you know. Uh, now pre-sort my dishes, which is excellent. <laughs> Most, best thing you're ever yeah, yeah, The thing I'm going to go down for. I'm for the journeyman. Sure. You're the dishes sorter. <laughs> yeah. Dish guy. So uh, my, my question relates to uh, percentage training. Um, I started uh, training doing kind of like uh, bodybuilding type rep ranges. And um, once I switched to full body workouts, uh, doing uh, MAPS anabolic, I really enjoy the strength aspect of it, uh, but I have a lot of trouble when I go back to when I switch my rep ranges back to rep ranges because I'm a lot stronger and I uh, have difficulty you know, dropping the weights back down. So I've, I've seen where 
instructors use like percentage training uh, to calculate their rep ranges based off of like their one rep max. Uh, so I wanted to know what your guys' opinion is of that and, and like what percentages you would use for different rep ranges. Oh, great question. First off, I, I'm reading your question here because you wrote it in earlier and it says you lost uh, about 40 pounds and your, your, your deadlift and squat went from 225 to 450 and 405. Is that, is that correct? That's right. That's, That's incredible, wow, man. Sick, man. Yeah. Great, great progress. Yeah. All right. Here's the deal. I think percentage basing your lifts off percentages is fine if you're uh, training for a strength competition, but when you're working out yourself and you're doing it long term, and especially if you're going into like phase threes uh, of like MAPS anabolic, percentages aren't really a good way to measure what's going on. It's all feel. It's mm -hmm. all based off of feel. And go lighter than you think, because what ends up happening is if you if you're squatting, you know, four hundred five or four fifty, and you're doing a single or a double. And then you go into, I'm going to do 15 reps of the squat. You may think, oh, okay, I'll put 285 on the bar. And then you're gassed after one set of, uh, of doing that, right? Go way lighter, go off the feel, and forget about strength. Just forget about how much weight's on the bar. The goal is to get a pump, have good form, and to feel the muscle. It's a totally different approach to strength training in those phases. Then when you get back into phase one... Then worry about the weight and you know how much you can lift for those low reps. I mean, in our in our power lift program, we yeah. get into this, right? It's the only program we get into. Yeah. So this is the only program where we we use that model. So and for us, that's when it makes the most sense. Obviously, you have a very specific goal, you have a date in mind, you're trying to time the peak of your strength. Uh I, I think that that obviously that makes a lot of sense to train that way. But even then, uh, and I, and I, I've had to have this question or uh, answer this to people in DMs and email before. Like even that, there's still a gray area even for someone who's competing at that because the truth is, if you had a, a bad day of sleep yeah. or you miss calorie intake or maybe you're just really stressful day at work or the home life or something like that, like that that percentage is not going to be what it says on the on the program or what you were told to do by some powerlifting coach like that's going to have to change and modify otherwise you end up hurting yourself uh or regressing because you're just overtaxing your body and you're overstressing it and so no matter what I, I think that you you have to learn how to feel your 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 own body your own energy how you anyway so even though and i think i think a lot of like people that program and a lot of smart real smart coaches use that model because it's kind of the the most scientific approach to training yeah. but the truth is that again it's still flawed because you take somebody like the example i just gave and it kind of goes out the window and so we find it important first to teach people that you know, and understanding how to to work with your body and to get a feel of, you know, how much weight should I put on the bar? And then as you get better and better at that, if you want to take it something serious and go into powerlifting, then you can run like that program and get into that. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not like a numerical mechanical robots. Uh, there are those kind of fluctuations. And I guess the only accurate way to kind of if you're just strictly by the numbers kind of a person like if you got to incorporate like hrv or something like that to at least give you an idea of like your body's readiness uh so if you factor that in you know maybe it'll give you a a clear look in terms of those fluctuations of um you know whether or not you have that kind of force output for that day um but even then still you're you're basically just like paying attention to what your body's feedback is uh, on a numerical sense versus like you could figure that out through your own intuition and just understanding yeah. how I, your body works. I also want to make the point because we, we can read your full question, right? I can see it up on the TV right now. And I had a chance to, to read right over right before you got on and, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it sounds like part of your challenge is you love, which is by the way, very much so like my two co-hosts over here, they love to lift heavy. They love to strength train. It's the best. That's their favorite way of training. And it's my happy they're, 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 they, they can be, uh, if they're going to neglect a rep range, it's going to be the 15 to 20 rep range because they love that so much. And it sounds like you're trying to figure out how much weight you should put on the bar and you want to put as much weight on the bar as you can and then also train 15 reps. And if and, and if that's where your mindset is, my if I was your coach and, and just training you, you know, for overall health, I would say to you, like, I actually don't even, not only do I not care about that, I would want you, I would rather you flirt with it being too light 
and our, we change our mindset going into the 15 rep range. In fact, I don't care if you accidentally put 20 pounds less on the bar that you could have done more, slow the tempo down. Slow the tempo down and 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 squeeze at the top and squeeze at the bottom yeah. and make the 15 reps feel like it's 20 pounds heavier versus being so addicted to wanting putting more weight on the bar. And I think you will benefit way more from that way of training than always trying to push your limits on how much weight can I put on this bar for how many reps I'm supposed to do to this program. So I don't know if that hits home for you at all, but if that if that's who you're like, then and if just like if I was coaching Sal or Justin, I know that I would have when we get into the 15 rep range, more often than not, I'd be telling them, hey, lighten the bar, bro. Lighten it up. We don't need to do this right now. Yeah. Like slow it down. And I would ch- I would say slow down the tempo. Go even slower. Squeeze the top. That's how I would I would coach you. This topic gets out of my mouth. There's two emotional. there's two points I'll, uh, two final points I'll make on this, Christian. When you're in the low rep ranges, train with a power lifter mentality. When you're in the higher rep ranges, train with a bodybuilder mentality. Okay, so to put it differently, <clears throat> power lifters try to make the weight feel lighter. Bodybuilders try to make the weight feel heavier. Okay? So when you're in those higher rep ranges, don't pick a weight that's heavy. Pick a weight that's light and make it feel heavy. When you're in the low rep ranges, pick a heavy weight and maximize biomechanics and technique to make the weight feel lighter. So it's two completely different mentalities. And if you go into them with those mentalities – appropriately, you're going to get the best results. Reap the most benefits. Now, here's the second point I want to make about percentages. Power lifters benefit more from those percentages, not because it's telling them to lift more, but because it keeps them from lifting too much. So when power lifters follow a percentage-based lifting program, they say, okay, I got to lift 75% of my one rep max for this particular rep range. And then they do it. They're like, ooh, I feel like I can go heavier. Then they look at the paper and they go, no, I got to stay at 75%. That's the benefit. It's not that they're like, oh my God, I can't do 75%. That's usually not where they benefit. Power lifters usually need to be told to go lighter. And that's where the real benefit of the percentage lifting comes from for them. It's just they're told because they see on the paper, I can't add weight. I'm only supposed to be at 65 or 75%. Or whatever their programming shows. I, I so love, keep that in mind. I love the advice you just gave right there. I think it's 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 that simple. When you get into the low rep range, think like a power lifter, and you're trying to rip and grind the most amount of weight you possibly can. When you get into the 15 rep range, you don't even care about weight anymore. It's all about technique, slowing the tempo down, the make squeeze. Make it feel heavy. Yeah, make the weight. Make make a make a. If you could if you could curl, you know, a hundred pound easy curl, grab. 30 pounds and make it feel like 100 pounds by slowing the tempo down and squeezing the bicep at the top and train like that when you're in those phases. Totally. Now, I want to send you MAPS Powerlift just so you have an actual powerlifting program to follow if you um, so wish. Now, I will say, um, you know, be careful because I noticed in your question, you said that MAPS Anabolic, you feel best. Otherwise, you tend to feel a little overtrained. MAPS Powerlift is a little bit more volume. So enter into it, and if you start to feel a little burnt out, uh, then pull back a little bit. But I'm going to send that to you anyway just because it sounds like you really like to lift uh, those heavyweights, and and those numbers you're putting up are pretty damn good. So Yeah, man. Thanks. appreciate it, guys. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. All right. You have a good one. You got it. Yeah, I don't don't think I could put it any more simply, right? When when you train like like a power lifter, whatever weight you have on the bar, your goal is to make it feel light. That's mm-hmm. the that's the skill. When you're a bodybuilder, real bodybuilders, they look at a weight and they're like, "Can I make that feel as heavy as possible?" But, yeah. And that's the difference. Th- th- that's such good advice and so challenging for most people. We talk totally. uh, we talk on the show all the time about how people tend to identify with a camp, and so the same thing, by the way, is true for the bodybuilder who gets into the powerlifting phase. Yeah, right. So if I have my buddies that are my peers in the bo- the bodybuilding world and they're lifting, they they're like trying to squeeze a deadlift. You know, yeah. or trying to feel the muscle. Yeah, they're trying to they're they're trying to get a they're trying to get a pump from their these big compound lifts. It's like, nah, bro, you you yeah. need to lift. You like, just need to rip it off the ground. Yes, yeah. So so it, and it's, it is because we we all and we're all guilty of this. We all tend to identify with a, right. a a way of training. And when you move into that higher rep range, the idea is to not only shift the weights but also to shift the mindset. And I think that's a, a really good way to think about it. I like I like that. All right. Uh, Next caller is John from UK. John, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, it's right. funny talk. It's fun and real being on a call with you guys. Uh, journeyman, tiny beard, and uh, moody guy. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, all we got for you, Jem. So we'll talk to you later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Um, so my question is, uh, I literally just came off stage at the weekend um, from a men's physique competition and um, I want to now train for a bit more athletic performance um, and introduce like some more um, explosive exercise into like my programming and things. I was just wondering if there was any like precursor exercises to fortify or stabilize my joints or muscles before like pulling the trigger and getting like maps performance or strong or something like that. No, the programs are programmed uh, that way. Yeah, performance would be perfect for you. Yeah, there. so performance yeah. is written so that someone like you can go into the program and starting in phase one, progress through and get to more athletic, explosive type movements. So it's already written that way. So it's not written assuming somebody already has all these, you know, pre these, these prerequisites. It's assuming somebody's okay. just got general fitness and then they get in the program. It brings you up to that, yeah. And it brings you up to that. So, And you, then as far as reinforcing the joints, uh, your, you know, <clears throat> your every other day is a mobility day. So you're going to get plenty of that in that program. That's a perfect program for you, bro. It's absolutely perfect for you. Well, Doug, Doug will send that over to you. How, how'd you do, by the way, on your show? How was, was this your first show? Uh, no, this, this is my sixth show. No placing in this federation, but I've qualified for finals end of October. Oh, nice. Good for you. Good for you. And it says here you used to do used to be a kickboxer. Yes, yeah, so I'm ex-England kickboxer, um, and I still teach that um, every week. I actually own a uh, fight gym um, where I teach that every week. Awesome. Uh, yeah, love it. And that's the kind of reason I want to get back into some like athletic movements because I might possibly choose to fight again next year, or I also play basketball, so I'd like to like take that up again as well. What nice. a what a different yeah, sport. Perfect. Which one's harder, physique or kickboxing? Stupid, dude. <laughs> uh, it's nice not to get punched in the face, but yeah. I'm going to say... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Excellent. Yeah, MAPS performance is, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. And I think with your athletic background, uh, you obviously have some, you know, some some gifts anyway. I think you're going to fly through that program and come out of it and feel really, really good. After that, you know, if you want to try something else, I think symmetry would probably be really good as well. Yeah, cool. I was looking at symmetry. That's okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, my second question is, do you have any um, specific morning routine you guys use to like get you ready for the my night time routine is quite good um just getting up in the morning it's quite sometimes a struggle i start 6 a.m every morning um i've heard like having a coffee first thing isn't great so i've been trying to cut down on that and i just feel even more tired so it'd be good to get some input on what you guys would you guys do yeah ideally you want to wait uh 45 minutes to an hour before you have caffeine because that allows your body to have adequate adenosine uh, production in the brain. Um, so, so the way caffeine works is it, it influences that through, uh, receptors in the brain. And so you want to wake up and allow your body to spike its cortisol naturally to have some of this production naturally. Then you throw the caffeine on top of it and actually lasts longer. So I'd go 45 minutes to an hour before you have your coffee. You want to get some sunlight. Uh, first thing, if you can, and this, you don't have to go outside necessarily, but you could stand next to an open window or a window, let some sunlight in. I'm sorry. That's tough in England. That's true. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, you know, it, without, they have sun lamps and they have not yeah. necessarily like uh, tanning uh, lights, but they have lights that are full like spectrum. A hatch alarm. Yeah. Too. And, so you could do that. Um, and then no electronics. So uh, wake up, no electronics and set your intentions. And there's a few different ways to do this. Some people like to journal. Um, other people meditate. Um, I like to do prayer in the morning. And it does t tend to set the stage for my workout and then work and then the rest of the day. I think the the no electronics is some of the best advice that you could give somebody that's simple and that I think uh, in <clears throat> today's day and age, it, we're all probably guilty of this where you roll straight out of bed and right away look at your Instagram account or your YouTube page or your Twitter. And or, get annoyed. Yeah, and get annoyed, get frustrated, get in a negative mood or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I think that there's a lot of value in going and connecting with real humans first before you get in, into the uh, digital world and allow that to disrupt your day. I think there's a lot in that. I also go back and forth on the whole 
morning routine thing, yeah. right? Uh, off air, I think Justin and I were talking mm -hmm. shit about it the other day. Yeah, we were. And uh, um, they're grumpy in the morning. No, no, uh, our good, our, our our buddy, um, why can't I think his name? Did a really good video. Who was it, Justin? That I shared with you that uh, was talking trash about. It. I cannot think of his oh, name right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hermosi. Yeah, uh, Alex Hermosi just did a really a really good YouTube video a while back. So if you look up Alex Hermosi morning routine and he has a really good philosophy around it and you'll appreciate it being a kickboxer athlete the the discipline that you have. and his attitude is like I, I i wish to compete against somebody who has this they need a morning routine to have a successful day he goes you know why because it's inevitable something's gonna fuck that up and i'm just praying that yeah. he's competing with me on a day that his morning routine gets disrupted so he's like my attitude is I want to train myself to be resilient. I want to be consistent with my habits and behaviors on the worst night of sleep, on mm -hmm. the best night of sleep, on the missing something that I like to do. And that like, he's like, I would rather discipline and teach myself discipline and consistency, no matter how I feel or no matter what I do to set the tone for the day, because I want to be resilient. Yeah. And so the biggest thing I, you can control is your attitude. Yeah. Right? So I kind of, I, I, I kind of identify more with that. I, I mean, and maybe yeah, but I, I, I'm going to, here, here's the thing. He, He's making the mistake of saying, if you depend on a routine and if it goes off, you're off. That's not that's not good either. I know. It's, it's like um, you miss your workout. Oh shit, the whole world's gonna end. Yeah, but one of the most viral things out there right now are these all these fucking morning routines. Yeah. And if you talk to anybody who's like super successful, they all they well all, they have a routine. They I all, guarantee it's not. It maybe looks different, but they have something. That, let me ask you guys. Even without your routines, I bet you wake up and do yeah, the same. Still yeah, you still shower. You still brush your teeth. Yeah, you have still, an order of operation. Right, right. And, and that may serve as your routine. Right. I think the key is like not just. Oh, open your eyes and blah, I got to run really to the just car. It's getting your mind right. That's it. However you can dictate that and like That's structure it. it. That's, That's it. why I like the, the, the tech thing because it's, you're not trying to add to your routine. You're just actually disciplining yourself to not allow something negative to creep into your day. Like, and I love the prayer thing, right? That's yeah. like prayer or meditation. It does. And it doesn't have to be this hour session. It can literally be taking five minutes. That's it to set the tone for the day and, and get your mind right, stay disconnected from the day. Because, and what I think my point and what I'm trying to get at and why I talked about Hormozy is because I think that the you get these gurus that want to sell like, you know, 15 minutes of this and then a cold shower of that. And then you, they set these, these morning routines up. And the reality is I know that I'm not the type of person that's consistently going to do that. And then I feel like a failure because I didn't do it. I'm like, oh, man, maybe I'm not well, meant it, to be a billionaire. It, it, it could like, end up being more stress. That's right. It ends up being yeah. more stress. And I'm worried more that I didn't get my morning routine in versus just like yeah. – being able to be resilient no matter what. So, I mean, that's just, that's my, my personal opinion. Yeah, I hope that. that all helps, John. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. We'll, um, send, go, we'll send performance yeah. to you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm currently a lot lighter than I was, um, like because of coming off stage. Is that going to affect anything or will that be completely fine just to move into it? No, it'll, no, it'll, no, it'll right, benefit sorry. you if anything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, I'm sure you've increased your calories and you're slowly reversing yeah. out. Yeah. So you, you're good. Yeah. It's a great time, by the way, that program per, it, it, I, I couldn't recommend a better program for somebody coming out of bodybuilding. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. To go into because it, it's going to be such a new adaptation while also increasing calories. You're really going to benefit from it. So I'm actually, I'd love to hear from you after you do it to to hear what your yeah. uh, your whole journey was like. Definitely. Cool. Appreciate right. it, John. Thanks, John. That was great to talk to you. You got it. Yep. All right. Yeah, you know, you, you, that touches on a good point. Um it's like this. It's like when somebody says, oh, I'm not going to work out today because I can't do the perfect workout. Mm -hmm. Or they stress out because I have to do all the exercises mm -hmm. and exactly the same thing with morning routines. I could totally see how that could become more of a stress um, because someone's like, I got to do this well, cold shower. I got to do this. Yeah. I got to do that. I got to whatever. A routine is a routine. And if you don't have one, or don't have something that sets your intention. It could be as little as five minutes. Well, I mean, start with. I think it's great to have an example out there of like how somebody's like approaching that and getting their mind right and and making sure like it's a priority for them yeah. to set the stage. But it's not it. You know, everybody's so individual. Like it's not yeah. really going to translate into your own personal um, routine life. That's such a an individual. This is my lifestyle. I have right. to address. I, I have a lot of. Th I, this is a better a better conversation to have at the front ha half of the show because I yeah. would I would yeah. like to have some dialogue For around sure. this and, and debate a little bit around it because I've I've gone back and forth on on this whole morning routine thing and have a, a lot of opinions on it. So we'll save that for a front half of the show. Excellent. Our next caller is Alex from England. Alex, how can we help you? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so I have a question. 
about my goals that I've got at the moment. So I'm currently attempting my first ever bulk, but my job is very active. So I'm a class instructor and I'm also a PT. But um, because of the amount of hours that I do and the amount of classes I do in a shift, it's uh, a lot of work. I feel overtrained a lot of the time. Um, I'm currently bulking at about 2,700 calories. I finally started gaining weight at that amount. And I'm currently running a map symmetry as well. Alongside of that, with the plans to move on to anabolic afterwards. But I'm just wondering how much is my work really hindering my bulk just because of the amount of stuff that I'm doing. So I do stuff like spin, like legs, bums and tums, a lot of running around. Give us, give us a little insight on like a regular week because uh, uh, obviously we know what you do, PT. I know how taxing just being a personal trainer can be, but what, what is your, uh, I'm more, are more concerned about the spin and group X classes. How many classes are you teaching a week? Um, so my shifts are currently 20 hours a week. There's anywhere from two to four classes in a shift. Ooh, okay, that's wow. And now are you, so, okay. Uh, when I, when I would train uh, group X instructors, I had a split 50, 50, half of them would just instruct the class and not do any of the exercise with them. The other half would get involved and do the exercises. Which which one are you? Um, I, I used to be the kind of person where I get involved, especially with spin, but now I've I've completely stopped doing that. I don't get on the spin bike. I try and not do too much in the classes, but it's kind of hard not to run back and forth, especially like circuits when you do the first lap showing all the exercises and yeah. stuff. Okay, well, that's that's a lot better, though. There's a big difference between you teaching a circuit real quick or instructing versus you actually taking the class and sweating your ass off with them. I mean, that, there's a big difference there. Yeah, I, I so this is going to be based off of how you feel, Alex. So, um, I, I've you know, look, I've trained some people that have an incredible tolerance for lots and lots of activity, um, although that's the exception. The rule typically is that they have to really scale back their strength training in order to get results from the strength training. So if you're following map symmetry right now and you're still feeling kind of burnt out, your sleep maybe isn't so good, you feel tired quite often or you feel wired, um, you get in the, the hot, cold, you know, imbalances where you feel cold or you feel hot, that type of deal, um, I would cut the volume in half. So cut it in half okay. and start there, see how you feel. If that doesn't do it, I'd cut it down even more and then start to really manipulate the intensity, uh, like make it feel easier and lighter. Uh, I would even challenge you because here's the problem with telling someone like you to go off how you feel. If you've been doing this for a long time, you, you may, may be very adapted and you may think you feel good. So uh, I, the thing I would be measuring is the, the strength and how you, and your body composition, right? So if you are following a maps program, you're increasing calories, you should be putting on muscle, you should be getting stronger, and you should be seeing a, a physical change. If you're not and you're 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 not you're not progressing, then I definitely would continue to reduce the 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 training volume. But just be careful of 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 you know going purely off of feel because you may think you feel good when in, in fact you're just adapted to handling that much uh stress and that you've never felt what it feels like to completely reduce it and take care of yourself. Yeah. So just keep be mindful of that. I would I would start with half, half volume of symmetry. Start there. Cut literally all so the at sets. At the moment, I'm on, I'm on phase three, week two. Um, and I, I have my – so I've made like a bit of progress. I've definitely gained some amount of muscle, but it's just I do feel worn down, like some weeks more than others, but I'd like – it's even like um, – so I started with symmetry because I kind of chose the program that I needed rather than I wanted to do because there's some – imbalances and aches and pains good for you yeah. yeah no literally take the volume cut it in half do half the sets half the sets of everything uh, and then and then from there i would modify intensity um, but i would start with ha half the volume and stick to half the volume for the remainder of the program and see how you feel from there that's that's where i would start and i'll, I'll still be able to gain on that yeah. you, oh, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll probably gain more yeah. If you're okay. feeling burnt out some weeks, you're you're just doing too Spinning much. Your tires. Yeah, so. you're a good example of uh, when people reduce volume uh, that they they all of a sudden start to see great results. So I just literally just do what I said: cut the volume completely in half, stick to that for the remainder of the program, and then fight the urge to raise the volume when you start to feel good. Because what might happen is you might start to feel good, like oh man, I'm I'm feeling my energy, I'm feeling strong, I want to push myself a little harder. Just stick with half volume for the remainder of the program and then take it from there. And if you want to add any, any supplements that may help a little bit, now I'm going to warn you, 
don't use these as the solution, just as part of the protocol. Ashwagandha, yeah. um, unless you're, it's counterindicated for you, because I don't know your medical history, um, but uh, I would go ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is really, really good at helping the body deal with just a, just too much stress. Yeah. And I've had a lot of success with it with myself and with clients. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a look at that. All right. All right. Thanks okay. for calling in. I hope Thank that helps. Guys. You got it. Thank you. All right. You know, you know, it's funny is that it's actually really common for, you know, I, we've all experienced this. Um, I would argue that most all, if not all, PTs uh, go through this at one point in their career uh, because we we love fitness yeah. and we just assume that more is always better. Now, obviously, she's an extreme example, right? She's teaching tons of classes and she's yeah. yep. and she's a, a personal trainer and she's also following a program. So she's definitely an ext extreme example. But I actually think a lot of personal trainers fall into this category. And I mean, I'm going through this right now. You know, it, it's it's blowing my mind. Um, how little I'm working out right now and the way that my body is responding to it. And it's just another like, oh my God, was I really, was I just, was I going too intense still? Cause, and, and, the, and because I wasn't training um, like every day, like I have been in the past, like I, I assume that you were basing it off of what you felt before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, I just can't stress this enough, like how crazy this can be. And, and again, uh, I'm speaking to personal trainers, right? The yeah. general population, the opposite is true, right? The general population can't string three weeks together of yeah. consistency. They hate training a lot of the times, like, but for the, for personal trainers, if you're a, if you're a health professional, a fitness expert or whatever, right. uh, this is something for you to look into that. I, I bet you, most of you would be surprised on how well your body may respond by reducing the intensity. Yeah, it just reiterates, like, you know, based off of the environment, that's really where you need to figure out what the right dose of stress is to to introduce, you know, for you to be able to adapt and respond in, in a favorable way. Because otherwise it's – it. You know, you maybe just be adding more stress into the bucket that, um, you know, overwhelms the system because it's just it's just fighting itself right now. So, you know, finding that is everything. Yeah, I had a client once that when I, I remember I, this might have been the first time I really, really figured this out because I understood, you know, you got to do less. Don't overtrain. I got that. But I didn't really get it until a little later in my career. I had a client who just was so active with hiking and running and swimming. And then they love to do Pilates and they like to do yoga and then they want to lift weights with me. And I remember, I distinctly remember being like, we're going to lift once a week. We're going to do once a week. It's going to be very, very basic. Mm -hmm. And the workout with me is going to be like 35 to 45 minutes. And then the rest of it will be mobility. And I remember her going like, that's not enough. Yeah. That's, and I said, let's just see what happens and we'll measure it off your strength. And lo and behold, strength gains were phenomenal. And I was like, that's it right there. I was like once a week was, and this is how I used to do once a week with a lot of people like this. I'd be like, just once a week, that's all we're going to do. And they got great results. Otherwise it was like this back and forth. And are we doing too much? And what's going on? Let's moderate, let's figure out ways to get you to recover faster and trying to, you know, plug every hole in the, in the boat. Uh, when it really, it was just, you got to do much less. Look, if you like mind pump, you will love mindpumpfree.com. This is where we have free guides that can help you with any health or fitness goal. They're all free. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.